to pay for experiences and not material things. So you're leading the pack. You're actually leading the, the millennial pack where you're buying something that you're consuming, which is an experience, as opposed to going to a ham fest and buying like a boat anchor or this or that, which is material. So yes, you're, you've actually wrapped around and you're now caught back up with the up and coming generation. Yep, come full circle, as they say. Well, as you get older, you need fewer and fewer in things. But if you're still healthy, you want more and more experiences. So, yep, that makes absolutely perfect sense. Because uh, people, you know, retired people are often traveling and going places if they have, the, uh, you know, the money and doing this and doing that. And they're not buying stuff to get rid of stuff. So, yep, that uh, makes perfect sense. Full circle. WA1QIX remote control for ID, and I'm pretty sure I heard Rob in there. I heard somebody that sounded like Rob anyway. Does it sound like this? Uh oh. Yes. Wait, who's that? Full circle. We come in with no hair, no teeth, and wearing diapers. We basically go out the same way. Who's that? That depends. It's a real furry guy with a weird looking nose. Well, never mind. <coughs> KK4 IVG. It's a guy with real furry and a weird looking nose. Can anybody explain to me now, you know, um, why there's a, a, a man that walks around near fest wearing a tail and wearing ears? Can, can anybody... I mean, have we ever actually discussed this before on the air? I mean, can anybody, like, explain that to me? That's just my stand. I guess I didn't see the guy. He's there every year. He wears a long, like, fox tail. And he's got these little fox ears. Yep. I'm glad I wasn't there to see that. What did the fox say, though? Well, well, look, now you guys know I'm an asshole, you know, I am. Um, so, a couple of times when he, like, would come walk by me, like, really close enough where I could say something, I'd always be like, hey, you got something stuck to your back. <laughs> or, hey, you got something stuck, you got something on your head. I would always say something to him, and he would just smile, but I, I really want to know why he wears that. I mean, I don't understand, I just don't get, I don't, I don't get it. I, um, I mean, the only thing I could think of... It's not good, and it has to do with, you know, bad stuff. Man. Was it a fox or a coyote? A natural axe? I believe he's in a, what they call an attention whore. No, it's probably a mountain man's hat. That's what it is. It's either a coyote, a fox, raccoon, skunk. What? No, 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 no. This guy wears a fake tail and fake ears and walks around with it. I mean, you know, um, yeah. It's not like, you know, it's not like a funny hat you just wear as a joke. This is like every year. Yeah, it sounds like you all got to go up there with the bozo nose and the mustache and glasses and all walk around like that. It doesn't sound like Davy Crockett to me. Yeah, it's not a Davy Crockett hat. If it was, I wouldn't be bringing it up. It's, to me, it's just creepy. It's, I'm very, very creeped out by it. I mean, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is that being done to, to attract children or something like that? You know what I'm saying? You noticed him. Yeah, he lives in his mother's basement. You noticed him. Right. <laughs> I was creeped out. <laughs> he probably does live in his mother's basement. Man. Hey, I used to live in my mother's basement. Rayon. My sister always lived in the basement. I could never, she was older than me, so I never got the basement. I was always bummed out about that. Yep, well, yeah, 17, let me see, 18, I moved out, but then I moved back when I was 20, moved back out, then I moved back in when I was 20-something, then I moved back out. Every time I would break up with a girl, I would always move back <laughs> in my 20s. But then, uh, you know, then I moved away, of course. But, yeah, 
I don't understand these guys. You know, living home in their mom's basement, they don't want to work, and then they complain about, you know, um, man, I need an amplifier, man. I can't get out that good. Well, gee whiz, ask your mom for a better allowance. I don't know. It's okay, at least if they went out and cut the grass and helped around the house, and it'd be different, but to sit there and do nothing, and one left. I wouldn't have made it this far if I ever had that attitude. I know, right? Um, <clears throat> I used to mow my grandmother's grass all the time, and she had to give me 20 bucks. So it, was, it, it got to be funny. We, you know, when you know, I was just I was young, and uh, my me and my friends would be getting ready to go out, and I'm like, hey, we gotta stop by my grandma's house. I gotta mow the grass real quick. And uh, so we started joking around, calling it the Grandma Savings and Loan. Yeah, twenty dollars to mow the grass. That's a lot. W A Q I X remote control. Yeah, especially from a family member, man. That's top dollar. Oh man, that was big money back then. Twenty bucks. Ooh, man. Part of that was yeah, where grandmothers do stuff like that. That's right. Grandparents are always good for stuff like that. What oh, happens yeah. that grandma oh, yeah. and grandpa's we say here stays KK4 here. KK four IBG. W3 MMR. Kilo 3 Bravo Delta Mexico. N1A left. SMU. Hey, that, that's that that's that guy, uh, um, John Bravo from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good signal up here or over here. Where am I? Oh, that's right. I'm in Connecticut. Yep. Where in Connecticut are you? I'm in Wall Wallingford, Connecticut. Oh, I, I just moved here, so I don't really know the place that much. I just know Waterbury and uh, Middletown because I work at Napa at, in Middletown and uh, up to Bedford Hills every day. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know where that is. Um, well, normally you'll be hearing me from Raleigh, North Carolina, because I actually live down in North Carolina, but you, you'll hear me. You'll, you'll hear me pretty good, and I'm sure I'll probably hear you as well. Um... But, uh, yeah, I used to live in Danbury, Connecticut, and then uh, moved to New York, then New Jersey, then North Carolina. But, yeah, I'm in uh, Wallingford, Connecticut, at my dad's house. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, what, which one of the flex do you use? That's the 5,000? Yes, sir, the 5,000. Oh, okay, I see how wide you are. I'm like, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm using the 3,000. I'm using the flex 3,000 with a Panda I'm right I'm now. I'm you got to explain that the flex is just the VFO there. I will, I will. Yeah, so you're not actually hearing the uh, flex. The flex is only being used as an exciter. Um, a, uh, and um, it's, so it's just, it's just adding frequency. And really, that's it. Uh, and of course, I'm using it for receive, you know, and for the pan adapter and stuff. So it's just adding some uh, some power to the transmitter. This is a Class E transmitter um, uh, with a pulse width modulator, and um, so that's what you're hearing. This is uh, 24 FETs, and uh, you know, it does legal limit easily, uh, and um, so that's what this is. And I have a, a similar setup in uh, in Raleigh. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we, we use the Flex 5000s as exciters. They work very well for that, and, um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with how they function. Uh, now, by themselves with an amplifier, yes, they sound absolutely fantastic. Oh, okay, cool. Well, um, I'm, I'm waiting, and I hope, I hope by next week I, I, I will, uh, get my amplifier. And, um, since I've become a ham, um, never use an amplifier, uh, so I build all my antennas. <laughs> I mess around antennas a, ho a whole lot, but um, yeah, so I'm, I can't wait to get my amplifier there. Go ahead. Well, that sounds great. What, what amp are you getting? Well, I have the, the E-Kit um, SB1000. Okay, that's the single uh, 3500Z, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, good, 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 good. That'll work. Um, much better than... Uh, um, um, being barefoot, so that's good. You know, you'll be able to do, uh, I think, what, 150 watt carrier, uh, 120 watt carrier or something. 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> As I said, it's my first amplifier, so you know, uh, just just learning a little bit more about about that side of of the hobby there. Go ahead. Well, well, the good thing is, is uh, 3500Z is instant on, so you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about war warming it up. Um, and 3500Z is very, very forgiving. Um, so, you know, that's a really good first amp. Yeah, uh, so my plan, um, well, I, I'm, I'm going to adjust the antenna because right now, where I'm talking here to you, I'm getting um, two two on the, the SWR, so I need to adjust the antenna a little bit for this side of the band. If I go low down, like um, 25, I have a one-to-one -one SWR, so I need to cut cut um, um, the antenna a little bit. Well, I would suggest um, either building a link couple tuner or or. Or, or getting some sort of a, or, or getting a, um, um, I think the only one I would actually get would be a Johnson Matchbox, Kilowatt, Kilowatt Matchbox. Um, those are really, really good um, tuners. Um, I like, I mean, that's, this is just my preference. I like running open wire feed lines. I don't like running coax. Um, this way I can uh, adjust uh, whatever, you know, the frequency that I'm on and have a nice one-to-one -one ratio with my uh, standing wave ratio. Um, but that's me. Um, um, I think a lot of the guys do run open wire feed lines. I, th I know Steve runs uh, coax. Um, but if you're going to be going around from band to band, you, you might want to be able to, uh, you know, to um, uh, adjust that with a tuner. Oh uh, yeah, I have the MFG. Um, well, the guys looking on that, I bought it at the Amstead. Uh, up in um, oh, Mercy, the one before the one that they have at Fairfest or something like that that they had the other day. I got a uh, tune of the MFJ 989, I think it was. So the guy's looking on it for me also that is fixing the amplifier. Lord of mercy. Okay, yep. Okay, good, good. That, that, that'll, uh, the 989, yeah, I think that's. Well, they say that it's good for 2,000 watts, but it's not, because <laughs> I uh, I actually did put uh, a couple of thousand watts into one of those, and well, it didn't it didn't it didn't fare very well. It arced like crazy, but um, it'll work good with that amp. It'll work good with well, probably most amps. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait for next week. That's cool. So, Steve, uh, what do you think? Uh, a tuner would be good for him? What do you think? I think he's running coax, right? Well, if he's running coax, it wouldn't make sense to run a tuner. But uh, uh, are you going to run open wire feeders or are you going to continue to run coax? Because it's very hard to adjust coax. You, you can only, I don't even know if you can really adjust it much. Well, I'm here to learn, so you know, you guys tell me the best thing to do because on on that tuna, I can I can run run like a, a lot of lines to it there. So. Right. So what I would well, do is I would buy a, a 500 foot roll of THHN, maybe number 12 or 14, maybe 14, and get some five shock and build your own ladder line, two inch two inch ladder line. Um. And uh, or four inch, but well, you can use two inch. Well, four inch, I think the five shots come in four inch anyway. And just make your own ladder line, or you can buy that that um, that crappy brown stuff or the black stuff. It's a uh, you know it's a uh, twin lead um, 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 wire that you could use, and this way you can actually get you know adjust it pretty well. And for the dipole antenna, again, just use THHN and uh, a little terminator block and just put your uh, twin leads on there and put it on the back of your tuner. You'll be able to adjust the crap out of it. Um, what, what I use up in Raleigh is 204 feet long dipole. And uh, I can pretty much go anywhere except for, um, I don't, it doesn't do very well on 10 meters, but uh, it works good on um, uh, 20, 40, 75 and 160.
You want to take a mash it to that box there. <laughs> yeah, so um, my thing. Well, then let me take off this box. The dinner bell rang. See you later. Okay. All right, just checking if somebody else. I just turned off the, my box there. Uh, yeah, so what I have here, my setup here, I still uh, ugly balance, so I would have to change all of that off um, to, to reconstruct um, that um, antenna. But I don't know, um, you're good on QRZ? Wait, how did you do all the bands? Um, well, I have one cable for all the bands. I I um I I I join all the wires, so I have 20 meter. 10, I have I do it from from uh, 10 meter to 80. So that's that's everything coming one cable there. That's a better antenna. That's what I do. I, it's called a fan dipole. I I would stick with that and just adjust the length of the uh, 80 meter antenna so that. You know, you, you lower the SWR. I mean, how high is the SWR? A little bit of SWR is okay with coax. You know, 1 dot, 1 1.5 to 1 SWR is fine with coax. Now, I use a fan dipole here. I've been using the fan dipoles for 40 some odd years, and they work great. Um, they work absolutely fantastically. And the, the feed line doesn't radiate. That's that's the ad advantage of it. Is you use use coax, and you you know the feed line does not radiate because balance is always a problem with uh, any any antenna. It's almost impossible to get them balanced. So the feed line radiates. So if you've already got a fan dipole up there, you know how bad is your SWR? I mean, if it's one and a half to one, no problem. Oh, I didn't know you had a fan dipole. Yeah, that's what I said. I have a fan dipole. Right now I'm talking to you. Uh, my SWR is moving between uh, 1.8 to 2. Uh, level out at 2, well, right now 1.9, the most I'm seeing it right now. And I don't even use the, the radius to tune it. So I wanted to adjust it to get it w at least a 1 to 1 here. If I go to um, 3.25 or 20, it is 1 to 1, so I just need to, 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 um, to cut the antenna to let it, to, to let it resonate up here and on 80 on this side, there it go. Yeah, you're thinking about it yep. right, yep. Don't cut it, just fold, fold the ends back a little bit of the 80 meter antenna, you know, fold them back, so you take a, take a foot off and fold it you know, fold it back on itself and attach the insulator there or the rope, whatever you're using to hold it up. Then you can adjust it. You can fool around with it. Yeah, make it a little shorter. Then it will be, uh, my antenna is resonant at about uh, 38.50. So I, my SWR is, you know, pretty close to one to one on 38.50. So then I can go way down to, you know, lower into the band or I can go, you know, up higher in the band, and the antenna is still good enough. Yep, that's 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 perfect. That's a good setup. Yeah. So, Steve, with a uh, with a coax, if he did use a tuner, how much could he po how much could he adjust on a coax? Well, use, using a tuner or coax doesn't doesn't accomplish anything. It, it might make the match look better to the transmitter, but. <laughs> Uh-oh. Check something. Something going on there. Yeah, you just went out a little bit there, Steve. I mean, you think he's in a bad spoot? I think so, too. What Steve was saying. Yeah. Is uh, will make it yeah, I think uh, what he's saying is basically, you know, the the radio will, uh, will look at it and see it's a better match. But I, it won't actually be. Um, but, uh, well, I mean, you could still do it, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. So, um, like, I've been playing around, playing around, like, this antenna is working so much, I am afraid, I, I, I was a little bit afraid. Be nice, Timmy. Um, I, I, w I was even thinking about running, uh, 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 wow, uh, off center fed on the other side, 
uh, the property, I was thinking, you know, um, just, just, just because I didn't want to mess with this, but it is working very good, so I think I'm going to try and adjust this a little bit. Turn down the audio. Yeah, man, Brenton, lick me head, take some cool ice water and cool the audio down. Sin, way uh, too sorry, much. No problem. Let me do that. What's up there, Timmy? Life is what's up. It is, it is. Yeah, I was just making sure the backup generator on the hill is functional. That's been a pain in the scrot. But I think it'll fire up when the power goes, if the power goes out. And I've just been doing a bunch of stuff, and I finally uh, come down the hill. I had the wire, one element of the wire array set up on 160, and I returned it back to 75. Is, uh, here's where it goes best. When the band goes long, long, I get on. And that's the name of that tune. Anyway, good evening all the way around. I've been kind of listening up in the bunker, you know, listening to the, you know, the goings on. Speaking about scrotes, um, damn, it's raining like hell out here. Tell me back, guys. Uh, well, it's supposed to rain like hell tomorrow morning. Yeah, it's, it's raining just as bad down here. Good evening, Timmy. W3 MMR. Catch you guys later. Kilo 3, Bravo Delta, Mexico. Soon be back. Let go, no okay, carry uh, The phonetics are confusing to me. Kilo 3 Bravo Delta Mexico. You yeah, just say KB3 DBM. <laughs> KB3 DBM decibel milliwatts. <laughs> okay, uh, K3 BDM. Um, I okay. Yeah, man. Dope. What is it? Dope Mandeville and Mope. Dope forward. Ever forward, never backwards. See Wonder when the band is going to go along tonight. Oh, we're already making contact with Jamaica and the Caribbean, so it's already gone long. Really? Well, yeah, where do you think Brenton is? I don't know. Oh, come on, is he really in Republica Dominicana? Nah, Jamaica, in Spanish town, Port Antonio. Oh, okay, Jamaica. With one badass amp. Isn't, uh, isn't Waterbury where that, uh, the bomber, the, uh, the Boston Marathon bomber was found, and... And, uh, like, where he was running from the cops and throwing bombs at the cops. Yes. In fact, uh, that's what it says when you drive into Waterbury, birthplace of the Boston bomber. Ha! What about the birthplace of the Boston buzzy? What? Yes. What is that? A, a digisond or an ionosond or something? No, an ionosond of some sort. I hate when mysteries are solved. It's like the end of a series. What is an ionosan? Yeah, it's like a ionosphere. It's this thing which spans a really wide range of frequencies. And the sequel is it listens for reflections to judge how high the ionosphere is. Oh, that was a double. I'm not repeating all that wisdom. Too bad. And the answer is, how high is the ionosphere? Pretty high. So that's what the answer is. Okay, and who's doing it? E what is it? UMass? Somewhere, uh, some, some group of millennials up in the Boston area. And that's the, uh, 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 or that's the bus, or the, the, the drive-by. Right. Oh. 
KB3 WMB Barefoot Mobile. Barefoot. Watch where you step. It might not smell good. Hello, Brian Barefoot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Every time I get on the radio. Hello, Brian. W2PHL. Hello, Phil. out of here. You guys take care. It's been fun. As always, Timmy Clark, Bobby, Steve, uh, Brenton, uh, Brian, Phil. I'll catch you guys later on. W3 MMR.